Hey guys, Kyle Marlette here. Welcome to the Tuesday Night Hangout presented by Murphy'sMagic.com. Hope everybody, hope everybody is enjoying their uh, Tuesday night uh, here in Vegas. It's, it's extremely cold. It's like a tsunami going on right now. Uh, we are here with uh, one of my best friends, and you probably all know him. It's the one and only Justin Wilman. Justin, say hi. Hi. What's your name again? Uh, <laughs> Kevin. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Hey, we're not friends anymore. Uh, no, so uh, if you don't know if you don't know who Justin is, you probably should. He is um, he's been voted uh, College Magician of the Year. I don't even know how many times. Um, he has been on Ellen twice, The Tonight Show twice, Rachel Ray a whole bunch of times. He's the host of a new show called uh, Win Lose or Draw on the, the Disney Channel coming up and uh, Cupcake Wars Food Network. There's a lot of a lot of stuff that you've been involved in with Justin. It's like a lot to say. Um, so, but if you don't know who Justin is, I'm going to give Justin an opportunity to kind of explain who he is and, you know, if you haven't seen any of his magic, you know, Justin, if you would just kind of describe, you know, your performance or, you know, the style of magic that you like to do just so people get a general idea. Sure. Thanks, Kyle. That was a very sweet introduction. Um, well, I've been doing magic since I was 12. You know, we all start when we were young. And then I got my start uh, for years as a private party entertainer, doing shows around town in St. Louis, and then I went to college in Boston. And uh, while I was going to college in Boston, I kind of dis I, I started performing randomly at colleges, because there's so many colleges in the Boston area, and uh, discovered this... Um, network of uh, colleges that's kind of a, a circuit that that needs entertainment and that magic fits well into so for years that became my bread and butter and I would you know tour college campuses and do 150 200 shows a year all over the country and live out of my suitcase and kind of live that traveling magician vagabond lifestyle and it was it was fabulous and then over those years I was able to you know hone down my show find a, my my comedic character as a magician and then you know, moved to Los Angeles and then uh, transitioned into TV hosting. So now kind of I have, you know, two personas. There's the, the magic guy and then the TV hosting guy. And for years I would go by Just Incredible as my magic touring name and everything. And uh, and then now, um, you know, everything kind of coexists. I, I, I still tour. I do colleges not as frequently, but I do more and more theaters and performing arts markets and stuff. And uh, love doing magic on television. You know, it's a it's an amazing medium to help a lot of people find out about you, and therefore put butts in seats when you're on the road. And uh, and then I've been really fortunate to book some you know TV hosting gigs and and do stuff on uh, Cupcake Wars for nine seasons and uh, some game shows and and whatnot. So it's it's been a fun ride. You know, I think what's great about um, what, what I'm really grateful for is that there's tons of variety in my life so that uh, I'm not just doing magic. I'm not just, you know, being a talking head on, on TV. I kind of get to do what's really fun and what excites me. And then Kyle and I really got a chance to start working together. I say Kyle and I like to speak to everybody. But I do this monthly talk show called Sleight of Mouth at, at, here, in, here in L.A. at the Nerdist Theater. And Kyle, you've been, you know, as you know, you've been instrumental in kind of helping come up with new material every month. This has been a problem. I'm basically like the best thing that's possibly could ever happen to you in your life is what you're saying. You are that thing. You are that <laughs> thing. You're the best thing that could happen to me in my life in your price range. Exactly, which is not a lot. So, uh... <laughs> but no, Kyle, you're, you're prolific. You, you know, when, when we jam, we're able to come up with stuff that I think remixes old ideas. And obviously, since there's, you know, only so, so many magic effects under the sun, I think that for me where the real creativity and the real innovation comes in is like figuring out new ways to do old things so they feel new and that's what we've had a lot of fun doing. Yeah, uh, and um, so you kind of hit, you kind of basically said everything that, uh, you've kind of answered a lot of questions in just cool. that so, and so we're pretty much done. Uh, but uh, so one thing I want to talk about because of all people to talk about this, you I think are the, the only person that I think has uh, a, a big right to talk about this, and that's college magic or being a college magician. Because, I mean, how many? I mean, I know you don't like to, you know, I guess glow. Well, well sometimes you like to glow. Uh, but uh, how many times have you won college magician of the year? Uh, it was college entertainer of the year. Oh, I'm so sorry. Four, four times. Four times. It was at the magazine Campus Activities Magazine holds a a readers poll every every year. 
which I think is always nice to have that kind of feedback. And, and I was lucky to, to get it four times in a row. And what that meant is that I was on the road too much and it was time to go <laughs> home. So. Yeah, and well, my point of though is so even okay. So I said college mistress in the year by accident, but the point of it is that you were entertainer of the year, which is crazy because in the college circuit there is so much entertainment from comedians, magicians, the music, and I mean, for those I, I don't know, I mean, how many viewers are actually are in college or have gone to college, but a lot of college places like they, I mean, they book crazy famous acts sometimes like you know the the thing that I've always experienced is that they spend a lot of money on one act and then never have enough money for the other acts and then they yeah. Yeah. Uh, so but like so for you to be college which uh, college entertainer of the year that's the same especially four years in a you know four years and in college market is hard to get into and it's a, there's a lot of um, knacky stuff and that's not a pun oh there we are. We're live again. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Google decided to crash because they updated everything. We had so many viewers. That Google <laughs> couldn't handle it. Uh, so yeah. my my question to Justin before Google rudely interrupted us uh, was: uh, so you, you've been college entertainer of the year multiple years in a row. Uh, what is like the just like I guess the first advice you would give to someone who? Uh, is starting to get into college market because college market is is a tough you know market to tap it into. Really so what you, you know what's interesting is it's re it's way really tough now compared to how it used to be because when I got into it there weren't like tons of magicians it wasn't so saturated so there was plenty of you were able to really have plenty of space to make your make your name as a magician and now there's so many magicians so I would say now if you're hopping to the college market I would try to um, I wouldn't say like downplay the magic, but create something that's not just being a magician. Make it, make something to stand you out a little more. Brand yourself as an entertainer who uses magic as one of your many tools to you know whip people up into a frenzy. I'd say that that'd be the best thing. Um, but but also maybe take a take a look at what all your competition is doing and figure figure out something completely different. So that just at first glance and when people hear about you or at first read or when they watch your clip, you really stand out. I think that's what's important. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, what is like some of the first steps that, I mean, trying to get into college work? Uh, like what, do, what, I mean, what, how do you even start? Well, you know, college, it, it's also one of those things, the college market is very important, one of those things to have an agent. You know, it's uh, someone who's handling the phones and kind of making those calls. So I would say, if the first step, at least it would make your life really much easier, is to get an agent, the best thing to do would be for you to, instead of you know cold calling colleges, let's you know find an agent, uh, you do some Googling around, find an agent that hand, handles the college market and maybe doesn't have a magician, someone who doesn't have somebody like you uh, on their roster, and you know give them the, your best stuff. Don't be annoying, don't hound them, don't annoy them, but just kind of there's there's a there's a tactful way to like stay on someone and be kind of mildly aggressive without annoying them because they may not need you right away. Is very important. If in a year they they were like, oh, you know what, we need a magician. Let's call that guy. You want to make sure you haven't annoyed him in that year, as opposed to them thinking like, well, we need a magician, but you know, there's that jerk who calls us every every week. You know, um, yeah. it's uh, it's a matter of you know, in the in these days, I think having a great tape, a great promo reel. Is, is pretty crucial and uh, it's also easier than ever to make that kind of stuff these days so getting an agent will make your life much easier Long yeah time. I agree and uh, just give me one second I'm sorry I'm trying to post the new links everywhere because of Google new links. I'll retweet these new links I'm gonna do that right now this is interactive social media it is and we're living in the moment uh, there we go done all right. Uh, so uh, some other questions would be, um, and I'm going to go back to the other YouTube and uh, the other event page and see what other people were asking because we had a lot of questions. Um, one question I want to know is, you know, you you kind of said it before. You transitioned, I guess, between this, you know, curly hair, just incredible guy. Uh, to you know the Justin woman that a lot of us you know have known now was that something that you decided because of TV work like is you know I don't know how many you know cupcake shows when a Justin Incredible hosting the show or was that just kind of like a, a life change or you know or what? Um, you know, having a, a stage name that's like you know a, a pun is 
You do love your puns. Yeah. Like, you know, when I was just incredible, what was great is uh, that people remembered it, you know, and I think when you walk off stage, you want people to remember what your name is. I mean, that's really important. There's not, you know, you know how many times you'll hear somebody say, oh, I saw this amazing magician who did this thing, and you're like, what was his name? And they just can't remember his name. But Just Incredible is something that people would remember because it's, you know, somewhat cheesy and tongue-in-cheek, but it was memorable. But as I was trying to pursue a career as a TV host, no one's going to want Just Incredible to host the show. He's not doing magic. So it made sense as a magician. I just had to basically decide what's more important. And to me, being like just an overall personality was more important than being known as a magician, so I just ditched it. Sure. And that was really hard to do because it was like my branding, my entire business was based around that that brand. You know, for me it was like, you know, you know it's like a fast food restaurant changed their name. You have to do a whole rebrand. So it was it was hard and there was a, initially a little bit of a slump and still people, you know, it's been two and a half years and people still... Well, I, it's funny you should tell you should tell the story about the. Uh, I remember because I was in I was at your house at the time. Tell uh -huh. people about the DJ, the billboards. Oh uh, yeah, there's some DJ in in LA called Just Incredible with a C, and he had a billboard around town called the uh, Just Incredible. I'm a scam artist, and it doesn't look anything like me, but people would still text me and say congrats on the billboard. So that's yeah. just a sign of. How, how good, you know, how good of a brand I guess I had created that it haunted me. But that, that's also something that's really important I think for, for for advice is to look at yourself as a brand. Like as magicians, we are, you know, as we market ourselves, we are our own product. You know, the product we're selling is us. So you should really look at yourself as a as a brand, as a product, and think, you know, okay, how in as few words as possible can I get someone to remember me, know what I'm all about, get my vibe, you know, um, that, that was important. And that's what I was able to do in the college market really specifically it was just incredible. Sure. And um, we had a question on, on the chat, which was, uh, I believe it was from our friend Nick. He, uh, he says, what inspired you to be a comedy magician opposed to being a, a serious magician? Um... Uh, well, I, I'd li I always like to think I was funny, but I was <laughs> never thought I was funny enough to n not do magic. Yeah, you know, I never thought I was funny enough to just be a comedian. Um, but I, I couldn't, you know, at first I would do magic, you know, I would do a silent dub act and stuff, and I'd be very serious, which was great, and I had a lot of fun with that. But I think as soon as I did talking I shows, I, mean, that's okay. I would, yeah. as soon as I did talking shows, I would... You know, comedy was just where my head went because all my heroes were comedians. And uh, and then when I first moved to L.A., I actually, the, the first gigs I would get would be regular spots at comedy clubs around town because all my best friends were comedians. So so that's, you know, you go to a comedy club, you can't really be too too serious. So that's kind of where the comedic angle yeah. came from. Unless it's a, you know, a, a parody act, I guess. Exactly. Um, let's see, we had another question, which was, um, this is actually a, a question uh, from Kyle McTavish on, on, on the chat. He, uh, and this is something that's brand new that just came up, and maybe no one knows about this. Uh, he wants to know about a uh, band of magicians. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that, uh, I mean, I'll just let you explain what it is. Uh, okay. So, um... James D'Elia is an Australian magician, lives here in L.A. He's been one of my best friends for uh, seven years now. And he's always been one of those guys who was, you know, we had a very similar niche in that we're trying to be, like, you know, young, funny magicians in Hollywood. And you kind of sniff each other out, and there's, like, a natural competitiveness, but we just became best friends. But we were very similar, like, in, in our choice of material and our style – Luckily, he's from a different country and sounds different, so that was, you know, <laughs> we're instantly different that way. But we're, we, you know, and our ambitions and our motivation was always very similar. We were cut from the same cloth. So um, a couple years ago, he had this idea to put together like a magic supergroup. He's like, what if we put together some of our favorite guys and kind of did like a joint show, like just how, uh, you know, the, the sum would be greater than the, the whole would be greater than the sum of the parts. And... Uh, um, Nate Staniforth is an old buddy of mine from the college circuit and is a buddy of James's and he's great, you know, very different style than us. He's kind of very 
um, introspective, intelligent, and mentalism and magic. <laughs> Compared or, to the rest of you. <laughs> well, no, no, really. I mean, like he's he's so yeah. smart. Like, yeah. I'm I'm always going for a cheap laugh, and he's going for kind of like really to make a deep meaning, and and which is a great contrast. And then Justin Flom, who you and your viewers know very well, uh, has been. Um, I think I met Justin four or five years ago. I was doing a show near Branson, and he came out and and we're cut from the same cloth as well. So the four of us, I guess it was about two years ago, decided let's try to put a show together where, you know, it's kind of we do the best of what we do individually and then we create a repertoire of things to do together, kind of like a magic, you know, super group, I guess is what they're calling it now. So that's what Band of Magicians is. And we're doing our, our premiere in Sydney, Australia, in January for the Sydney Festival. And uh, it's pretty exciting. It's very I mean, cool. It's a uh, project for all of us because we're all, you know, we're all busy pursuing our solo careers. But to be able to come together and do this show and share the stage, you know, uh, for an amazing run in an incredible theater, you know, I think um, I think it'll be a pretty cool spectacle. Yeah, and and I, I'm excited to see it myself. I mean, it's it's four of my you know really close friends who all have are really great. So I'm excited to see how uh, how things mesh together. I'm excited to see a stretch or illusion happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing that I had a question, and this actually um, came from a friend of mine, which was, so for those who have seen your show, I mean, you uh, you started out doing college, but now you have this full evening show. Um, you have a habit of like, like I don't know how you do it. Even to this day, after being friends for however many years, I still don't understand how you do it. You have a habit of like going out and finding m material that is marketed material that no one really knows about or, or anything like that and then turning around and making it like amazing and the best like original piece of material but ironically it's something that we could have all done we've just always all like looked over it you know or 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 look just look past it and stuff so how is it that you like do you have a process of like picking your material or you know or do you just literally buy everything and just see what sticks or you know how do you yeah, do that? Yeah, um, you know what I do is when I'm looking material, I try to find stuff that I feel like I could put put as much of my own personality into it, you know? So a trick that has many phases to it or a routine that kind of is long and, and I can kind of put my own spin in it, I think is, is, is what I look for. So like the silent treatment was this trick that's, you know, that a lot of people do. And uh, my buddy Angelo Carbone converted it to cue cards. Which which makes a lot of sense. So now it became a trick that 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 can go so many different directions. So when I was trying to come up with something to do on Leno, I was like, well, what are some normal things that are in you know the Tonight Show studio? I was like, cue cards are there. This is perfect. So and then I worked on this routine for the cue cards and tried to put my own spin on it, and and that became something that feels organic. So I, I like to kind of I like to take stuff that already exists. That's my strength. I mean, Kyle, when we jam, you know, sometimes I'll come up with something new, but normally I'm like twisting ideas that are already out there. Or you'll put something on the table and I'll come up with a, a why to do it. Like I think it's very important when you're coming up with new material to know what you do well and know what your weaknesses are so that you can surround yourself by people whose strengths cover up your weakness. So, you know, like I've worked with you, I've worked with uh, Kaylin Morelli and Derek Hughes and Vinny DePonto, like guys who are really great at just coming out of nowhere with these ideas and then I can figure out how to either make them funny for me or, um, you know, uh, create in situations out of them that lend themselves to comedy. Um, I think that's, you know, that's where my strength is. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, I agree as well, with that as well. Uh, it's just really frustrating sometimes. I'm trying to think of a new example. Let me think here of a new example. Like, um, well, like one routine I'm working on, I'm working on um, – well, there's a great, I mean, cut and restored rope I've always loved, but I'm trying to do, like, work on it now with the, with a new method and a new prop. I'm, that's my, I haven't figured it out. I'm trying to figure out how to make cut and restored rope cool again. But I love the trick. It's just so simple and direct, and if you can do it super clean, it's super strong. What a great opener. I'm just trying to figure out how to make it, how to make it unique. Yeah, so. and I mean, I think that's a perfect example how, as magicians, we, we need to try to look at stuff with its full potential and not... Oh, that's just another card trick, or that's just another whatever. You know, there's, mm -hmm. uh, there. It's really easy. Like, I mean, for me, and I, and I mentioned this, I think last week with John Armstrong. Like, 
like I would say, you know, there's like four pieces in my show that are literally directly out of Tarbell. Like there's no, like there's there's no. I mean, I, I've changed it obviously because in Tarbell it's like borrow most a gentleman's your, uh, pocket watch. Most of your most of your pattern is right out of Tarbell. <laughs> I I do say pocket watch, a gentleman's pocket watch, quite often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so I I think as magicians we don't need we need to not bypass stuff as uh, as much as uh, as we do. Yeah, um, I mean, like honestly, like. Kyle, you were here with me two weeks ago. We were working on new material, and one of my favorite new material pieces we came up with was silk to egg. Oldest trick ever, okay? But it's like such a good trick that if you can mm-hmm. figure out a way to do something like silk to egg, but make it mean something new or present it in a way, it becomes brand new. So you basically have polished up a classic and to be a gem. So, you know, like tried and true stuff is, is for me, I, I think, awesome. Just like we both do Gypsy Thread. With a balloon, you know, it's just a simple way to twist it, and it makes it something so new. Uh, sure. Don't neglect the classics, you know. I mean, I love, I love watching what all the new stuff is that comes out, you know. And I'm clicking around on Murphy's, seeing what the new stuff is. But really, like, you know, the classics. Invisible deck is such a miracle. Invisible deck is so much better than so many other card tricks. And it, James Galea does invisible deck in his show better than anyone I've ever seen. He he gets six seven minutes out of it and gets a practical standing ovation at the end of it. Like, it's all about how you do it and creating stakes, finding the funny moments, making your own, you know. It's, it's fun to do. Sure, and I, and I agree totally. And here's another question that we had um, by Cody on the, on the chat. And I think this is a really, this is, a, this is an interesting question. I'm excited to hear your answer because no one is really, it's funny that he's pointing this out because not a lot of people like to talk about it even though, uh, I mean, at least for me, and I know for you, like, I perform a lot in comedy clubs, and, and so do you. So it's, this is something that actually happens often. His question is, is that you've done a lot of talk shows and hung out with comedians. Why do you think so many comedians hate magicians? Uh, and that's a very interesting question. So what is your answer to that? Why do they hate magicians? Or let me okay, and, and real quick before you answer, I mean, comedians may not necessarily hate magicians, uh, but they they're not necessarily their favorite. It's just like you know, comedians don't necessarily like ventriloquist artists as well. You know, you know, it, it, you know, I think the mentality in comedy is that their job is to you know, your job is to write and write and write until you write and create a comedic voice, and you're able to get laughs from words that you put on paper, you know, and and get up there with nothing and just destroy. I mean. I think as as magicians, we would love that. I mean, we love that idea. I, I love and respect comedians, and I know, you know, pretty much all comedy magicians are probably greatly influenced by people like Steve Martin and, you know, Jerry Seinfeld and these people who can just get up there and destroy. And I think that maybe comedians are sometimes resentful of magicians because we're able to get those same laughs and those same reactions from, you know, from magic tricks, you know, that that are inherently gimmicks. You know, they're inherently tricks. You know, uh, we're able to, to get up there and destroy with without as much sometimes hard work as it takes for a comedian. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. sometimes we can resent that. That's just why, like, just like comedians, you know, look down and frown upon prop, prop comics. But Carrot Top get up there and crush pretty much any other comic. So what he has props, you know, that's that's his his shtick. So I, I think that any comedian who just blatantly says that. Magicians are beneath them. I think is 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 ignorant. But I mean, there are a lot of magicians who who do hacky stuff and get away with it, and who do who do you know tired old gags and lines. And I get why comedians would or anybody would roll their eyes at that. But but I think that uh, they're 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 too similar yet very different art forms that very different things. Yeah, some of the same things go into a successful performance. And, you know, you'll see a comic work so hard to get laughs and then a magician come up behind him and me and I'll do the banana bandana and get huge laughs and they'll be like, well, what, look at, what, 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 a, what, a, what, a, what a prick, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, is that a new couch you have? Yeah, it is a new couch. Thanks for noticing. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll be excited to sleep on it. Uh, I just got, uh, it's a nice big old leather couch because my previous couch, um, was old, too small, like smelled like uh, dog piss. <laughs> this new one doesn't yet. That's nice. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, uh, one question we have on the chat, it says, what are some good tips 
uh, about practicing new material, and I, I think this is um, uh, I think this is interesting because unlike close-up magicians, you know, a close-up magician, you, we can literally just take a deck of cards out anywhere, at a Starbucks, anywhere, and just do a new trick that we're working on for a random stranger. But as a comedy magician, for example, with Vanishing Banana, you can't, you know, come out in a banana costume with a huge cloth and a cell phone and a sound system and everything to actually practice that material. So what is, like, some good tips uh, that when, you, when you're practicing a new routine? Well, yeah, I mean, Kyle, you've been here when I've been working on new stuff for the first time. And it's a mess. It really is. It is a mess. Like, first off, you have to, you got to figure out, you know, figure out enough about what what you're gonna do. What what's the bit? Like, so for example, like you saw, I was working on this multiple deck invisible deck routine when you were here last. So it's just like I'm doing it around my house, doing it for my girlfriend, doing it for some friends in the house. Enough until I feel like I got the basis of the routine, and then I go up at open mics, you know, around town, and I'll go to. I think it's great if you can find relationships wherever you live with any open mic comedy nights and, you know, they would probably love to have a little variety, to have a magician pop in. So, and that's a perfect place with low stakes, you know, you don't have to tell anybody you're doing it so you don't have any fans or fa friends or family to impress. You can suck and it's safe. And I think having a place where it's okay to suck is so important. So you've come with me where I do the, the Monday nights, open mic at Meltdown Comics, and I've gone up there and I've, I've sucked. I've done jokes that are horrible and that don't work, and there's awesome. no way to know that they're not going to work unless you do it and it doesn't work. And then you gotta you got to change. And then I've done stuff, you know, there for the first time that works out great, and I'm like, wow, what a, you know, now then, then the confidence level goes up. So finding a place where you can go and perform in front of, I don't know, it only has to be eight, ten people, whatever. I mean, most open mics audiences are, are pretty light. A place where it's safe to suck is important, especially mm -hmm. putting new material in. Yeah, you know, I, or if you don't have that, when you're doing, you know, a show, if you're doing a, a paid gig, whether it's a, you know, a birthday party or wherever, like you can put a new trick in between two really strong, confident tricks, and and try it out. And that way, if it completely fails, you know that your next routine is going to bring it back up. You know. Yeah, yeah I I, uh, I agree. And uh, another question we had. Um, by, um, who was it? Was it Kyle? Yeah, Kyle. Uh, on 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 the chat, he says, and "This is a, a good question because he he references you and I, but um, this I think whatever the answer you're gonna give is good for anybody and their friends." It says, "When you when you're creating new magic with Kyle, how do you do it? Uh, do you just put an object on the table and say, what can we do with this, or do you take something old and make it new?' Which you've kind of discussed already, but I mean." I mean, our process is, at least for me, when whenever I come out to work with you, it's very random. Like, a lot of times we can literally just be in the car and we're and one of us will be like, holy crap, that's a great idea, let's do this. And then the other idea is, you know, you know, here's this stick of butter that is relevant to this joke that I'm working on. You know, yeah. is there a joke with that? Interesting. Um, well, I think when you're here, a lot of times we're working on topical stuff, so we're trying to come up with a way to do a magic trick about something in the news or um, something thematic, you know, like, if we're, you know, we were talking about social media. What's some new tricks we can do with social media? And we just started batting around ideas. It's very ra loose, loose and random because I think the less structure we have, the less productive we are. So if we're like, I just want to come up with a great new trick, and it can be for anything with anything, then it's like, oh, wow. No, no parameters, uh, I don't know where to begin. But when we were like, okay, we need to come up with a magic trick about Paula Deen. And then, you know, we'd Skype my buddy Simon, and Simon would be like, why don't you do something with a, a baked good, because she likes to bake a lot. And then we're like, I'll show you an accent. Yeah. With butter. And then we came up with the idea of just doing card in butter. And which is, obviously, we're not like reinventing the wheel, it's card in orange. But we did it with a stick of butter, and by, you know, softening up and getting the card in there and refreezing it and packaging it all up, it like creates a whole new miracle that's a whole different level than what card and orange was. So by giving yourself like, you know, restrictions and guidelines to create within, you can get specific. And I think that's important. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. And, um, and it's also, it's different, you know, every time we work together and it's different Every person, every every friend that I hang out, and every 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 magician that I work with, it's it's always different. Consulting or or just 
even with just friends just jamming, uh, like certain people just work different. But I do think it's super important, just like you said earlier, about having a place that you can go to suck and, and be bad. I think it's super important uh, to have friends that you can you can trust and you can jam with and who you can trust to give you um, real answers. Like I I, I wouldn't want to be friends with somebody who if I say hey what do you think of this they're just going to lie to me and be like oh yeah it's good just whatever just to brush it off. Like I want people who are going to be like oh, well it's good but this part sucks and you should change this and you shouldn't say this or you know whatever. Yeah, I mean a lot, there were. I think you and I are good at politely telling each other when... Not always politely. <laughs> yeah, well, if I don't laugh, I don't laugh, but uh, sometimes, I mean, you just, you got to keep it real. Like, when you're brainstorming in a group, you got to know how to not get your feelings hurt if someone doesn't think this idea that you're very excited about is great, and you also need to figure out how to, like, take, take what somebody else brings to the table, add something to it, flip it, you know, you got to be open, you can't have an ego, you know, I mean, I, I, I feel like when we're jamming, like, uh, I'll be. Uh, I'm very good at taking your criticism when you say. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you can't, you can't get, you can't get, you know, grumpy or bitter if someone doesn't like something. They're they're obviously giving you, you know, constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't be, you can't be angry. Uh, one question um, that is is this question is I think hard to ask, um, but um, I think it's something maybe you can you can. Try to answer, but also there's a there's a spinoff question, uh, which the first question was, I, I've been performing uh, magic for over ten years. Uh, what is the best way to really get your name out there uh, and and let people know you who you are and you know what you do? Um, I think you have to re you have to get specific and figure out like who what where you want to perform. Like for me, for when I was in college, like my specific market was kid shows. So I would like very specifically market for kid shows and be marketing to mothers. And I would have like an ad in the back of a, you know, the Boston parents paper. And I would, you know, my whole business was that. And occasionally I'd get non-kid show things, but I tried to get specific. I mean, just like we're talking about, if you, if you, if you put on your business card, magician for all occasions, charity events, restaurants, corporate events, birthday parties, it's just too broad. You got to get, you got to get specific. So once you get specific, I think, like I said earlier, creating that brand, you know, uh, be a marketing machine, um, handle every aspect of what you do professionally and responsibly and quickly. I mean, so many gigs you'll book because you're the first person to call them back. That's important. Um, you know, uh, but getting specific. I mean, don't try to do everything at once. Yeah, I think that's good. And a spinoff question to that is, um, and this is... Um, Kind of, it's a good question. It says, Justin, now that you appear on a lot of talk shows and have your own show yourself, do you feel like you have to work harder to live up to people's expectations and keep improving your tricks, or is it just the same old, you know, Justin that college people see as well? Um, well, yeah, you have to work harder. You have you have more to lose. You know, if, if you, the more eyeballs you have on you, have to you have to kind of top yourself. I think that's. That's the the blessing in disguise. I mean, I'm sure um, anybody you talk to who has like a, a good first appearance on a TV show, when they go back, they're like, "Crap, what do I do? What do I do not to one up that?" Um, but I think for me, as opposed to always just like it, it, it's not just about the magic. I try to really make it be about you know the, the let the personality come through and, and the comedy. So picking material where I can have moments. Uh, funny moments and and beats and and you know bonding and just like you know just just good TV moments is more important than the, the magic always being better than what I did. Last time. I'd rather have more memorable moments. Sure. Um, monkey, monkey, <laughs> monkey. Uh, okay. So uh, we're running slightly out of time because. Justin has to leave here in a few minutes, but um, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions uh, that are really good that we should ask here. Um, Where are you seeing all these questions? I want to. I want to. On uh, on YouTube. Uh, go here. I'll send you uh, the link. Hold on. Uh, oh, I can't because of YouTube is lame. Uh, go to our Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com/slash Murphy's Magic. Okay. And uh, other questions are there. Uh, and in the meantime, while he's doing that, uh, Justin, I want to figure out something. So for those who don't know, Justin was on the cover of Magic Magazine last month, which is, like, amazing. You know what's funny is I was 
somewhere, and I had a magic magazine. And I was reading. I think it was at an airport, and like this woman was just. She couldn't comprehend the fact that as magicians we have our own magic. Mag Here, let me get a close. Right, no, you're, like, you're, like, you're like, you're like, lady, we've got tons of magic to magic. I, mean, I know. Got, she, didn't under, she didn't understand that magicians actually oh, let me, let me let had a magic. Me, uh, so uh, I want to go to Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com slash Facebook. Uh, to uh, 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 a. Um, a, a signed copy of your magic magazine. So uh, in the oh, meantime, wow. when you're going to our Facebook page, uh, you should figure out a way. Uh, I mean, we could have someone, the first person to tweet something or first person to, you know, whatever you want. So um, in the meantime, if you guys have any last questions. Uh, <laughs> I'll sign this to you. This is my own personal copy. This is one of the only of, like, the thousand that I have. This is my favorite copy, and I will sign this for you. Okay. Perfect. Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. What can we have someone do to get... Um... Oh, um, here, here. How about this? Who, whoever, can, whoever can do this. Somebody should uh, think of a classic of magic that hasn't been done in a while. And Kyle, someone should give us a great magic classic that we are like, oh, we should totally put our spin on that. And then we'll get to work on it. So who, who can give us... A classic of magic, yeah, a great forgotten to to... classic that yeah. needs to remix. So the first uh, first people who can go to uh, Twitter, which is uh, twitter.com slash Murphy's Magic Supplies, and Justin underscore Wilman, uh, and tweet at us uh, a great classic of magic. Classic that you of can... magic. I mean, we're talking like, you know, cut and restored rope, soak the egg, classic. Old that should be revised and, you know, that you think could be turned into a trick. And uh, then we'll read off the answers real quick and see... Uh, what which one Justin thinks should be uh, should be one, uh, and in the meantime, there's a there's a, a question here that's funny because uh, it, it's actually really good. It says, "Is uh, is there a gig that you absolutely refuse to do?" And uh, I think that's funny because you recently just went to uh, you just went overseas uh, to Guantanamo Bay. So therefore, no gig I will refuse to do. Um, <laughs> what gig will I refuse to do? Um, I mean, no gig will I refuse to do on face value. I mean, these days, uh, you know, there's certain gigs that are, you know, that that that, uh, that are more fun to do than others. But I'm trying to think, what gig will I refuse to do? I mean, I probably would refuse to jump out of a cake unless the money's right. See, that's the thing. If the money's right, Kyle, we'll do anything, right? I I I know I will. I will do anything for. I mean, if the money's right, I mean, uh, I will work for you for money. I'm trying to think what I what I have have if there's anything that I've turned down for any specific reason, you know. Um, you know, I used to do bar bat mitzvahs a lot, and I kind of don't do them. I mean, I, I I'm saying like in college, I, I would do bar bat mitzvahs, and then these days I kind of you know don't do. That's a bad example. I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah, <I wouldn't>. uh, <laughs> Sadly, my my man, you know, I should probably say no to more things than I do. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm the wrong person to ask. Okay. Uh, well, we have some questions, uh, well, answers to that question that we asked. So, and then you guys can pick out, uh, then, Justin, you can pick out who the winner is. Uh, yeah. One question we have on Twitter is uh, uh, a dub pan, a modernized dub pan. Yeah. Uh, a penetrating frame, which I'm assuming he's talking about the plastic frame thing. Uh -huh. Lincoln rings, collar-changing knives, Houdini's milk can, collar-changing knives again. There was uh, something else. Uh, uh, the bra trick, uh, zombie ball, card forehead, Sardini silks, parasol act, all those are uh, all those are good. These all uh, just came in just now. Yeah, on the chat wow. and on Twitter. Uh, pulling a rabbit out of a hat, which I actually I know you actually worked on, or we have we have an idea that we're working on that actually involves sure. a rabbit hat. Honestly, my my favorite that I've heard there that I'm I'm now thinking about a way to bring it back is the the baffling bra trick. Yeah, it's a good trick, man. It's a good trick. Is it is that too perverted if I say that's my favorite? <laughs> no, it's no. I guess not. <laughs> Murphy Stell, the baffling bra, bra trick. I believe we do. I believe we uh, we carry it. Uh, some of the other things is uh, five in one transpo zombie ball, miser's dream, which is a good trick. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good classic. I mean, these are great. These are great. Um, Twenty century silks, which is kind of like baffling balls. Mm -hmm. So, which one do you think is the best? 
You think? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say baffling bra, man. So far, I mean, there's some great ones on here. Nick Pope has said a couple great ones. Dove Pan, um, Metamorphosis is great. I mean, Zombie Ball, so okay. good. Okay. So I guess the winner of the signed Magic magazine by the Justin Wilman would be uh, Cody Comet. Is that? I don't know if that's your real last name, Cody. Is that your real last name? Uh, I met Cody at Magi Fest. You did? Uh huh. Look at that. I love Cody. Cody, yeah. good call on the baffling bra, you dirty mind, you. <laughs> so uh, I will confirm every all his information and then um, have Justin send out a signed Magic magazine for you. I'll, first even, have, um, I'll even have Betty. Oh, as well. <laughs> she uh, she doesn't like it. Hi, Betty. Um, Betty, that's your buddy Kyle. Betty, it's Kyle, and a, and a bunch of magicians are watching you. Your <laughs> butt, Betty. All right, so uh, that con includes concludes our uh, includes no concludes. You know our, what I get out of this, Kyle, is that, that that I take that I talk too much when I answer questions, and therefore we don't get to answer as many questions. You do, but you know what that means? We're just going to have to have you back. I would love to come back. I hope I hope the listeners had fun. Uh, this is fun talking to you. Yeah, we should do one in person where you're actually here. Oh, you know what? I gotta. I almost forget this every single month. Uh, well, every single week. Uh, give me one second. I'm gonna pull up. I had it picked out our Monday night contest, which was to win uh, two of the new Jay Sankey effects, and I have it here somewhere, and I will post it again on Instagram right after this. Where is it? Hold on, hold on. Bear with me. I almost, I forget every single week. I don't know why. Uh, here it is, Matthew Miller. So if Matthew is watching. Uh, you won the Magic Monday contest, so you win two of the brand new Jay Sankey effects, and I will post that on Instagram right afterwards just so everybody knows in case he's not watching. So congratulations, Matthew, you won, uh, and we're make a love die. Uh, have you seen it, Justin, our, our meme? It's really funny. No. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a love die Vernon uh, picture. It's like a picture of die Vernon, and it's this really funny, sarcastic um, saying by die Vernon, and it says, P.S. love die Vernon at the end of it. So it's like uh, you flashed Again, you know, and then love die. It's it's really funny, and uh, we had a lot of guys uh, submit answers. It's like the nerdiest of nerdy magic gifts. It's perfect. It's really the nerdiest meme out there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, with that all being said, I'm healing up. Okay. Oh yeah, you want to tell people what that's from? So, whose effect is that, by the way? Uh, Will Will Sai. Will Sai, genius. Will Sai. Okay, amazing magic he puts out. This is the vanishing pen. New effect on Murphys.com. <laughs> when you, you make a pen disappear. But uh, I think when I was doing it last night, I got really comfortable with it over the past couple weeks. And I love it. It freaks people out. But last night, I think I just assumed that I'm, I'm really vanishing a pen when I do it. So I slammed that napkin crushed. And I literally stabbed a pen. I think it went in a half an inch into my hand. It looks not as bad as it felt. I mean, it was bad. <laughs> it was really Anywho, so that uh, concludes yeah. our Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, you two can own the Vanishing Pen. You're welcome for that. Yes, um, and uh, we will see you guys next week. So thanks so much, Justin, for joining us. And uh, anything you want to plug real quick? Uh, slide of mouth. I'm going to do that show again November 5th, and I'll tweet yeah, about it. We just did a show like two weeks ago. I don't know why we're doing it. It's crazy. This one was a quick one. November 5th with uh, Todd Glass, Bush Wallace back, Michael Rayner, great juggler. You can watch it, justin.tv slash slide of mouth. Or if you follow me on Twitter, I will tweet about it, and then you'll be reminded about it. Perfect. So you guys go do that, and we will see you guys next week. Bye, Justin. Thanks, guys. Happy Tuesday. Bye-bye.